I jumped onto my next Android phone which I'm going to review right now and this is none other than the Huawei Mate 20X. Now this phone is supposedly and allegedly the best smartphone for gaming. So we had a mini debate in the office as to which smartphone is the best for gaming. But that also raised about another question. Should we actually differentiate a category for gaming phones and smartphones for gaming? When I hear the term smartphone for gaming, it literally means a phone made by a non-gaming company which has the best specifications for gaming. But we'll get much more into that later on in the video as of right now, I want to raise this question and ask, is this phone really the best smartphone for gaming? So last year at the Huawei launch event in London, Huawei CEO Richard Yu compared this phone to the Nintendo Switch and actually claimed it to be the best portable mobile gaming machine. You know what, let me show you the clip of him actually saying it on my 7.2 inch AMOLED display. Doubled the, the gaming uh, battery life, 6.67 hours, compared with that three hours, doubled the, the game. So Mate 20X, the best portable mobile gaming machine. Do you hear that? I was mind blown. I was like, who would ever think someone had the balls to actually compare a smartphone to a Nintendo Switch? So let's do a fact check with the Huawei Mate 20X and the Nintendo Switch. It has a bigger screen of 7.2 inch where the Switch has a 6.2 inch. It has a higher resolution of 1920 by 1080 whereas the Switch has a resolution of 1280 by 720 when it's in handheld position. And also, this has a 6.67 hour battery life compared to a 3 hour battery life on a Nintendo Switch. But that is because the Huawei Mate 20X uses a 5000mAh lithium polymer battery. And the Nintendo Switch uses a 4310 lithium ion battery. Now it's obvious that the Huawei Mate 20X has a bigger battery with 5000mAh. But it's also because it uses lithium polymer. And lithium polymer batteries do last longer than lithium ion. Even though it costs more in manufacturing, lithium ion batteries do suffer from aging even when it's not in use. So that's a very quick chemistry lesson for you guys. So on paper, the Huawei Mate 20X does beat the Nintendo Switch. But let's talk about this phone as a functioning smartphone first. Now before I carry on, just keep in mind that this phone is 1,148 Singapore dollars. So it falls on the premium side, can be a little bit pricey for some of you, but just keep watching. So we've got a 7.2 inch AMOLED display with 1080 resolution and an 87.6 screen to body ratio and a water drop notch which can be removed by just adding a black bar across it. But it's 2019 people, it should not be a problem anymore. Why is no one laughing? So this phone uses a USB Type-C charging port and there's a speaker top and bottom. You got your power button on the right side of the phone along with your volume button. And there's one more thing which I love the most which is an audio jack. Now any premium flagship phone with an audio jack honestly has a special place in my heart. So now I can actually game on my phone while charging it. Although it's not advisable to play your game while charging it, you know, it's not safe. Another thing which is not advisable is to bring this phone into the toilet because it only has an IP rating of 53 which is dust and splash resistant. So as we look at the curve back of the phone, we can see there's a camera layout over here. We have a fingerprint scanner and there's also this vinyl-like glass pattern made by the etching in the glass. It's funny how it's called vinyl pattern because you know it actually makes like a vinyl scratch, you know, like... You know, but one bad thing about this phone is that for some reason, it leaves behind very obvious fingerprint stains. So let's talk about the camera. There's a frontal facing camera with 24 megapixels and an aperture of 2.0. And there are three lenses on the back, right? And they're all powered by Leica optics, all right? So we have a standard wide angle lens at 40 megapixels with an aperture of 1.8. Then there's an ultra wide lens with an aperture of 2.2 at 20 megapixels. And there's a telephoto lens at 8 megapixels with an aperture of 2.4. So the camera can record a 4K video at 30 FPS, a 1080p video at 60 FPS, and a 720p video at 960 FPS. So here's a short clip of how 960 FPS looks like. Whoa, dude, look at that. Now that is super slow-mo. However, it's only 720p. 
but still, it's pretty impressive. So I've already laid down all the basic specs you need to know about this phone. So let me ask you the question again. Is this really a gaming phone? So if the CEO of Huawei is daring enough to compare this phone to the Nintendo Switch, I think it's only fair for me to compare this phone to the other gaming phone that I have, which is the Razer Phone 2. So right from the get-go, we have a larger screen display of 7.2-inch AMOLED display versus a 5.72-inch LCD display. The Huawei lacks color clarity and it's not as bright as the Razer Phone when it's under direct sunlight and this phone does not have a high refresh rate. This has up to 120 hertz, as you can remember from my video. So it really is a give or take. Do you want a bigger screen with lesser color clarity and a low refresh rate or a smaller screen with a higher refresh rate? To me, I would prefer to have a higher refresh rate because as a gamer, you want to have your smooth movements, no tearing in the screen and to make it more nicer to the eyes. I mean, bigger does not always mean better, in my opinion, in this regard. Now, when it comes to audio, both phones are supported by Dolby Atmos. However, the Razer Phone 2 speakers are THX certified amplifiers. And like I said in my previous review, the Razer Phone 2 is one of the loudest phones in the market right now. But to me, all of this means nothing because I play my games with an earpiece in. Any phone with a headphone jack has a special place in my heart. So when it comes to audio, this one wins solely because it has an audio jack. So when it boils down to battery life, obviously the bigger phone wins because it has a bigger battery with 5,000mAh and the Razer phone has 4,000mAh. But after using both of these phones for about an hour, the Huawei phone does not feel as warm as the Razer phone. Now even though both of these phones has a vapor chamber cooling system, the Huawei is also supported by a graphene film. Now, a graphene film is a thin and strong conductive material which helps divert away the heat from important phone components. Another reason to factor in for the lesser heat on the Huawei phone is the Kirin 980 chipset versus the Razer Snapdragon 845. The Kirin 980 has a 30% higher performance rating than the Snapdragon 845 because it requires lesser energy consumption per frame. But to be fair to the Snapdragon 845, the tech has been around for about a year, so it's considered quite old. So guys, in conclusion, to me, this phone is as good as any gaming phone out there. Although it does not really hold a gaming brand, it's still good enough for gaming. And if you want to compare this to the Razer phone, honestly, I'll prefer the Huawei Mate 20X because it has a bigger screen and longer lasting battery.